Hello, welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe. It's kind of a shortened week in the market in the sense that we were only open half day on Monday and then you had uh, the market closed for the 4th of July on Tuesday. And uh, here in the final couple days of the week, um, we definitely see some volatility, but pretty light volume. A lot of traders probably took the whole week off and it's a little hard to kind of find our bearings on where the market is right now, watching the bond market very carefully see where interest rates are going. A lot of people didn't pay attention to this, but the 10-year Treasury yield, which had started the year in 2.5, 2.6%, had come all the way down to the 2.1% level, and just in the last week of June, jumped up to 2.3% plus change. It sits about 2.35 now. So 5 and 10 basis points here and there don't seem like a lot, but um, really you saw about half of the move down in bond yields come off in the last week of June as well. Half of that move down that we had seen in the first six months of the year. So anyways, as it pertains to this week, uh, the big story I think right now anyways around markets is some elevated uncertainty that North Korea represents. I think that the uh, reading of the tea leaves would suggest I still don't believe the United States is in position to take any kind of preemptive military action, largely because the retaliatory strike would, would represent a, a worse situation for the neighbors in Asia that are that are allies of the U.S., namely South Korea and Japan. So um, the Trump administration's hope thus far has been that China would intensify their economic sanctions and definitely China has the ability in doing so to really bring North Korea to a point of kind of crying uncle and knocking off some of these shenanigans. But this week they did successfully test an ICBM missile. And so this little story continues. And the reality is that I, I write about a dividendcafe.com this week. Markets have mostly been right for a long time that there isn't a lot of reason to elevate volatility or market fear around North Korea because for the most part, whenever they kind of get out of line, the rest of the world sort of buys them off. There's usually kind of an economic objective and then things sort of settle. But this uh, new leader, Kim Jong-un, knew in the sense that several years back his father, Kim Jong-il, passed away and uh, he's certainly a madman dictator and, and there's a lot of uncertainty around it. Do I believe it represents an immediate threat to our portfolios? Of course not. But do I think that there is, again, to the extent that Trump administration is trying to leverage China, um, could it lead to some breakdown in some of these trade issues with China as both sides kind of jockey to get the outcome they want with North Korea? I think that's the bigger story to watch. So we're watching that. Let me real quickly get off of this week in the markets and just kind of give you a rundown of 2017, the first half of the year. Basically, all risk markets were up. Ironically, one of the only countries that stock market was down in the entire world in the first half of 2017 was Russia, um, the country that supposedly was supposed to benefit so much from a Trump election. Um, Israel, I think, was modestly down as well, but more or less Japan, Western Europe, emerging markets being the big leader um, year to date, and even the S&P 500 and Dow both did very well. So we know that bond markets, stock markets had a great first half of the year. Technology was the big winner, healthcare second. Technology got beat up pretty big in June, but nevertheless, first half of the year still was the big leader. Financials and energy were underperformers first half of the year, but at the end of June were the big leaders. So if there is a rotation shift going on that will be a big story to watch in the second half of the year earnings season will launch here in another week and uh, that's where we get a chance to see if earnings acceleration will continue moving this market higher or not um, but that's the lay of the land in the market we're going to leave it there for the week uh, subscribe to this uh, dividend cafe on youtube if you are so inclined and dividendcafe.com this week we have some great charts and further information would love for you to check that out as well Thanks for listening.